It's your Amanita Dreamer. If it's your first time here and you want to know about this mushroom, then check out my work. YouTube loves to censor me. So I had to put all of my videos on my own website, pay for the bandwidth myself. It's AmanitaDreamer.net. It is free. Click over there, watch anything and everything you want to know. So the first thing that we need to do is get rid of just the assumptions that I'm seeing everywhere. And that is that berserkers were just what the Vikings did when they took a drug and they went berserk and it's how they were so crazy and battle and could do all this crazy stuff. And it's why they were so fierce. Okay, so that is an assumption that is not true. So the berserkers are a very specific Viking. And so when you look at the word berserker, berserk here, it's bear shirt or bear shirted. And when you look at historians who break those words down that, that know linguistics of Old Norse, they interpret it as either bear shirted, right? Or wearing a shirt made of bear skin. And the consensus currently is that it is a bear skinned shirt. The berserkers, berserkers, they would do one of two things. And we know of people like this today, right? Where they are men who want to be more elite, so think of the Roman gladiators, that kind of thing. Elite warriors, and they train to be elite warriors. They also didn't tend to have too many ties to home. They wanted to travel or they were willing to go into battle knowing that they could be the first killed, but because they were so highly and elitely trained and more skilled, there was a better chance they could come home and the two kinds of berserkers that I'm learning about, one, a kind that would sort of group together, and it was always in numbers of 12, and they would train together, travel together, and fight together, and they were like hired mercenaries. So if you were a landowner and you had a dispute with another landowner and you needed to settle that dispute and the two of you didn't want to fight, you could hire your mercenary and maybe the same mercenary if you really liked them, and they would battle for you. They were hired by other leaders to fight. Sometimes they would fight for entertainment, but they were mercenaries for hire, and they traveled in groups of 12. The other kind of berserker that I'm reading about are the kind that would go ahead of a raiding party to intimidate and scare the people of the town or the place or their enemy or wherever they were headed, what they are known for. And that would be biting their shields and painted eyes and growling and fierceness and wildness in their eyes. And they, they seemed invincible. And so what the theory is, is they would put wooden armor on underneath that bear shirt, which is why they wore the big bear shirt, so that when they were hit, they were impervious to these blows, to axes, to punches, to shoves, to spears, to all that. They seemed big because these things were big underneath and they seemed invincible on top of wild eyes and, the, and that the darkness in their eyes, all that, the black, and then the screaming and the crazy lookingness, right? And so what the theory is, is that it was a show. They were fiercely trained, but part of that training was to shock and intimidate, right? And it it's similar to like New Zealanders, the Hakka. It's meant to be like, oh my God, what is that? It's crazy. And it was effective. It worked. So they would go ahead of a raid and in the hopes of subduing everyone and making everyone just cower in fear, so there would be less bloodshed, less fighting. It would be easier to take that area or to take the goods or to take whatever it was that they wanted to take. From what I'm reading, you feel free to disagree. I'm going to leave all of my references and everything in, in this description here. So please look at it and see what you think. But this, these are the two things that I know of that the Berserkers did. There are zero writings anywhere that shows that they drank anything or were under the influence of any drug at all. But I want to make a couple of other cases. And one is this priest guide. This is where we believe this whole idea came from. 
And it is just this one dude in 1784, a priest named Audemann. O oh, with the two dots over it, right there. He was Swedish and just randomly stated that going berserk was the result of eating the fly agaric mushroom, the amanita muscari mushroom. And he wrote it and then nobody knows why he did that. There's no reason he would have done it. No one understands why he did it. He never said it again. There's no other writing about that anywhere after that. It's the only sentence in all of history. And it's attributed to this one priest. I'm sure you could find something about him maybe in his personal life or we could make some assumptions about why. <laughs> I swear this mushroom has the most lies told about it. It's crazy. It just kept getting repeated kind of thing. If it were this mushroom, let me tell you, there is no special forces. There are no elite anybodies that would take this to go into any kind of battle. And now that enough of you have used this mushroom, you know damn well, and I've used it for four years now, there's the ibotenic acid side, and you can see me eating it raw and doing the ibotenic acid side, and that's fine. And I get all hyped up, and I'm like, ah, I see how people could, could want to conquer the world with this and fight and do all these things on it. But that's, that's only for the few hours that you're under the influence of the ibotenic acid side of the mushroom. And, and I guess, I guess... If you were highly trained and, and then, you know, you could just sort of put it on autopilot. But the problem is, when do you take it to know specifically when it's going to kick in <laughs> and that this whole thing is going to be over in a couple of hours? Because if it starts to turn to muscamol and you just pass the fuck out, like you're dead. And what if it starts to turn to muscamol and you're in the heat of battle? Like you won't be able to lift a, a sword. You won't be able to fight or do anything. You would be, you'd be killed. It's just, you see where I'm, what I mean with all of this. So if you want to do your own research, feel free to, but I want to say something positive about this. And that is that of course they had this mushroom because we know today it just, it's, it's prolific. It grows everywhere that the Norse lived and spontaneously today, people want to make things with this mushroom. The Vikings had their mead. There's no reason they would not have tried to make Viking mead with Amanita mushroom. Having said that, I talked to the man on the mountain and told him about all of this. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make some Amanita beer. So. So I have video of when I went with him to talk about it and it was really hot. And I'm gonna try to splice that in here where we're talking about it and I'll hold up the recipe, but I may not because Here's my problem with this. Here's my problem with it. We know that benzodiazepines and alcohol will kill you. And I do know that the only deaths that have been, where Amanita has been in their system when they died was when they also drank a lot of alcohol. So there's that. This sat for over a year. It fermented for over a year because he and I both just got busy. I am going to give you a chance to try this and here's how. In October of 2022, I am speaking at the Radical Mycology Convergence. I am also doing a panel with Kevin Feeney and William Rubel about the Amanita mushroom. When I do either one of those, I don't know which, I'm bringing this with me and I'm gonna pop it open and I'm gonna share it with whoever wants to taste it. So, incentive to come maybe? Anyway, I'm gonna pop this open. If I put this on YouTube, I can't open this on YouTube. So for the YouTube people, if you want to see the rest of this video, go to amityDreamer.net. Otherwise I'll get a strike on my channel. This will get taken down. It won't serve anyone. So sorry about that. And if this is the end and you're not going to go there, then thanks for watching. And you should go there anyway and learn more about this mushroom. I love you beautiful people. I'm <laughs> sorry about.